Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you a walkthrough of my prepositions and put lesson. I actually released this PowerPoint last year and I had a small clip of me teaching in class, uh, but I never made a walkthrough for it and I never actually planned to sell the lesson. I just thought it was a cool video and I put it up and people were asking about it, so I ended up releasing it for sale. And I just thought I could make a better version of it, make it nicer, change the color schemes. I added different, a few different things to the lesson just to make it better. And I just think now it's a much better lesson. So if you already have this lesson, if you already purchased it before, I will send it to you for free. Uh, if you purchased it on Taobao, I'll just email it to you. If you bought it with Sendal, you'll receive an email notification saying there's an updated version. You can download it for free. If you do like videos like this, don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, if it's your first time here, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And don't forget, like I said, you can purchase this lesson. You know, if you don't already have it, uh, you can go to my Taobao store and get it there, or you can go to the link in the video description below and you can find it there and download it very, very quickly. And I have dozens and dozens of PowerPoints now for sale. I think there's like 50 or so in my store. So if you're in need of a PowerPoint or you need like, you know, some ideas for lessons and you need a new PowerPoint, you can just go down and check the video description below and you'll see links to tons of PowerPoints or you go to my Taobao store and you can find them there. And I think with my PowerPoints, one of the things about them, um, even if you're not gonna use them in their full form, I mean, some people do, they use them in their full form, they'll take them and teach them directly in their class. Uh, but all my PowerPoints are editable, so you can take them and re-engineer them, take the games I have in them, the formatting, everything, and change it and make it your own. You can change the topic or whatever you like, or take pieces from it and add it to your lesson. So um, I know that making a PowerPoint takes a really, really long time, and that's one of the reasons I'm releasing these for people to download them because it's just a time saver. And I think people can really benefit from just downloading a full product or downloading a product that they can quickly adjust. Like I could take someone else's PowerPoint and adjust it into something of my own in like an hour or two. Or take, making a whole PowerPoint as far as finding the pictures and doing everything can take hours and hours and hours. Or even come up with the idea could take, you know, a day or two to get it right. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy this. And yeah, let's get right into the walkthrough. All right, let's have a look at this PowerPoint. So as always, I have uh, my intro, um, the rules, a little warm up and review section, and then we get into the lesson. So the first thing I wanna say here is, this lesson is designed for grade two or three, and we're going to be using the word put, which will be a new word for a lot of them. Um, but the vocabulary I wanted to show in this lesson that I showed to my own grade two classes um, is very easy. Word they already know. And I just want them to be easily be able to use the words they already know in a new context. And the prepositions, again, they should know them, especially on, in, under, and by, or on, in, under, and next to. Um, we're just adding one more preposition here just to make it a little bit more challenging for them. Um, but again, this is a lesson that I think they should be taught if they've already learned the prepositions. And it's sort of like a review and getting to use these prepositions in a new kind of context, okay? Um, so, you know, if you're teaching this to grade two or grade three, um, I think I would suggest that you, I mean, you can teach the prepositions as its own lesson. Um, you could even take this PowerPoint and take out the part about put and use the, just the preposition part as its own lesson and add in some other little games or activities if you want. I do plan on making a specific preposition lesson um, and put it up for sale, but I don't have that ready yet. So uh, this is a lesson I actually taught last year and I have a video of my, me teaching it last year, but I wanted to upgrade the PowerPoint and make it better. Um, so this is what that is what this is. Okay, it's an upgraded version. So you can take a look here. There are uh, a few words: book bag, um, pencil case. Again, these are words that they should know. Toy car, um, teddy bear, and then there are three different places where they can potentially put these things. Okay, so the first one is desk. Then we have chair and box. Okay, these words are words they should already know. Uh, maybe they don't know box, not all of them, but I think most of them will know these words. So uh, again, this is a great lesson for them to review and get to use the words in new context. So here are the words again, teddy bear, toy car, book bag, pencil case, desk, chair, and box. And quick little game here, flying word game, just to get them playing something, get them excited. Um, you know, when I taught this with grade two, even though my grade two class are pretty good at English, they still really enjoyed this lesson because I had it, I made it in a really fun way. So essentially the way it works is when they see the picture, they should say the word. The first student to say it uh, gets points. And you just control it by clicking your clicker or touching the, the board or the mouse or whatever, and the 
you know, the flashcard will fly by and the first student to say what it is gets points for their team. The kids absolutely love this game. It works really, really well. All right, let's go on to part two. All right, so the next part of this lesson, we're going to be reviewing the prepositions. Um, what I do with my class is I show them the Chinese. You know, if you're teaching this in another country, you can change the Chinese into Spanish or Korean or Thai or whatever language you need to. And um, I, I get the students to, you know, raise their hand and tell me how to say it. Okay, so in this case, it's on. And my action for on is this, on, on. Make the kids say it. They can write it down in their little notebook if you like. Um, and we have in, in is like this, in. And we have under, under is like this. Next to is like this. Now there's a song that goes on, in, under, by, on, in, under, by. It's a great song, but I don't like saying by. I'd rather say next to. Um, so I do sing that song with my class, but I'll, I'll put it on and go on, in, under, next to, and I'll make them say next to <laughs> instead of by. I just think next to is a better word. Um, you know, I think they used by in the songs. It was easier to say on and under by, but, and then we have above, which the students, you know, are not going to probably know. And the Chinese in this case is the same Chinese word. Um, but just, you know, you can show that there's a space like on is like this above is like this. And I normally like point at the light and I say, the light is above my head, not on my head. You know, and they'll laugh. They understand that there's a difference. And normally, some student will raise their hand and like clarify in Chinese. Okay, then we have them all again. You can show it, and the student should say it. Um, you can say, "What is this?" and they should say, "On." What is this? In. What is this? Under. What is this? Next to. What is this? Above. And you can go on, in, under, next to, above. And what I like to do here is just do the actions a few times. Um, you know, get them to say it. I'll even use my head and I'll be like, and they should say on, then I go, and I say in, under, next to, above. And I'll play a quick game like that with them um, in class, you know. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I think it's fun and the kids really like it, you know, they quickly do the action, okay? Um, you can just say the word and they should do it, or I do the action and they say the word. It's really, really fun and just, again, this is a review. They should know a lot of these words. Above is the only word that I think maybe grade two doesn't know, um, but they shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be difficult. You know, this lesson is made to teach them how to use put. These, this is just a review. All right, let's go on to teaching part three. Okay, so the next part of the lesson um, was not in the original lesson I taught and had for sale previously. I wanted to add this extra slide in here. What can you see and just see what they say, okay? In my, in my lesson I taught it last year, I just asked them without this slide, you know, but I think, you know, it's better to have the slide and they can see the, the English, you know. So what can you see and see what they can say here. Um, some students will raise their hand and try to say a sentence and then you can show them, you know, that you're prompting them with word on and that they should say something like this. I can see a book on the box and you can do some actions here. Like I can see a book on the box, okay, or something like this. You know, you could do some sort of actions. And then you move on and say, what can you see? And I have the whole class say it. What can you see? What can you see? And they should try to say what it is. Okay, so here it should be, some of the students might just start by saying under, you know, or pencil under, pencil under chair. And you wanna get them to say, I can see a pencil under the chair and get them to say it together as a group. Uh, you can have them say it by row even. Um, I, well, I make them stand up and, and do the actions together. You know, you, you can think of your own actions here, but you know, it's easy to you know, on the spot come up with your own actions. If you try to memorize my actions, it might not come off as very natural during your own class, okay? And you go through each one. What can you see? And here, you know, now it's the third one. Some students should be able to probably do it, okay? So it should be like this. You can prompt them with the word in, and then I can see a teddy bear in the box, okay? Get them all to say it and rinse and repeat with each one. What can you see? You can have the girls ask the boys, the boys ask the girls, and then show it like this. Again, now this one is next to. I can see a book bag next to the desk, okay? And rinse and repeat with the next one. What can you see? Okay, this one's above, obviously. And then I can see a toy car above the box. All right, let's go on to the next part, teaching part four. 
All right, so here's where we're teaching what is probably something new, you know, for most grade twos. Um, if you're teaching this to grade three, depending on their level, yeah, this could also be new, okay? So um, it should be the word put, put, and can practice, okay? So take a look here. Put the pencil case on the desk, please. And I wanna make sure they use the word please. So during class, I'll, I'll tell you in a second how I do it, but I, I do something funny with the kids with the please. So if I don't say please, they shouldn't you know, do it, or they should say no, 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 and then we say please. So put the pencil case on the desk, please. Sure, you know, no problem. I'll say stuff like that in class. You can see that it happens, okay? Again here, you can have the class say it. Put, you can have an action for put. It can be like put, put the pencil case next to the box, please. Do, 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 yay, no problem. In my class, like I didn't, I don't put the no problem on the PowerPoint, but you can write it on the board, um, you know, and then you can point at it and have them say it. You can add it to the PowerPoint if you like. Put the toy car under the chair, please. And you can have a student stand up and, and read this, you know, see if they can read it. You can have a group read it. Normally what I'll do is I'll have one student read it and then I'll have the class read it together and, you know, just to give some students a chance to, because there's gonna be students who wanna show off a little bit. <laughs> and I like to have the students who are pretty good, you know, like show the rest of the class, like lead, let, let them lead the way. You know, it's fine, it's easy, let's do it together. You know, and the student will stand up and say, and then we'll do it together. All right, and then let's practice. All right, let's practice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show them what happens to the object, and I want them to use the English they just said to tell me how to say, you know, what would make me do this action, okay? So I'll show them the first one because they're not gonna know, you know, put the book bag above the box, please. Have the whole class say it. Then I'll go back and I'll be like, who can tell me what to do? Who can tell me what to do? And someone will stand up and say it again. And then I'm like, oh, no problem. And I'll like, dun, 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 dun. and I put my hand in front of the screen and pretend I'm moving it. If you watch my video from the class, uh, it's pretty funny, you know, the kids really like it. And then they'll say it again. Same thing here. So I'll show, the, I'll show what happens to the object. Ooh, who can tell me? And then they raise their hand, they try to say it. Good job. Then we'll say it together. Put the pencil case in the box, please. Say it twice, go back. Who can tell me how to say it? And then some student will raise their hand, repeat it again, the whole class will say it. Then I'll say, no problem, boink. Okay, and rinse and repeat for each one, okay? Who can tell me, okay? Put the teddy bear on the chair, please. Everyone, put, put the teddy bear on the chair, please. Go back, remove it. No problem. Okay? Because <laughs> this thing, put the, on the, you know, please, it is a command. So, you know, if they see the thing happen and then they say it, it's a little bit strange. But what I'm trying to do is prompt them to be able to tell me what that action is. Okay? Rinse and repeat for each one. Remove it. Have them say it again together as the command, then I say no problem, and I do it, okay? You could do this with real objects, with realia, with toys, with a desk. You can do it in class in the front, you can, and I have done that. But just be prepared that with a large class, uh, with a small class, it's totally fine. Like 10 kids, less than 10 kids, like doing that in class is the way you should do it. With a large class, just be aware that if you start doing stuff with realia in the front of the class where not everyone can see it, you start, you will lose classroom control. Like they're not gonna be able to see, you'll have students standing up, they'll be chatting, it'll get loud, which is okay, you know, but just if you're not good at quieting them down or like controlling their behavior, it could be hard, you know? So with my class, I do do that, but I'm very strict, you know, like sit, sit nicely, okay? And then I'll try to do it. On the PowerPoint, it's very controlled. Everyone can see it. No one has an obstructed view. So everything you're, is very clear. If you're doing the front of the class, like I said, there's kids in the back, there's you know, 50 kids in the class, they can't all see it. So it could be you know, harder. So <laughs> just be aware of that. But using realia, using real objects is great, you know, especially if kids can come up and touch it and you can give them the command and they can do it. You know, it definitely helps them for sure. But uh, my message is with large classes, just be aware that you will run into problems, um, which is fine, but you gotta learn how to deal with them. All right, let's go on to the next part. One thing I forgot to mention is in the previous part where I was, you know, moving the objects, um, if you go back and watch the video from last year that I had about this lesson, uh, I was like pretending to, you know, move the object like by touching it 
and the kids really liked it. And I thought it was really funny um, because I taught the lesson a bunch of times. So I knew exactly where, you know, the thing was going to go, you know, and I, I like would like pretend like elbow the thing and like push the button at the same time. So it would fly through the air or I'd pretend to grab it and move it and put it there. And the kids really, really liked that. So if you can do stuff like that in the class, they really, really like it. You can go back and watch my video and see what I did. Um, I can't kind of came up with that on the spot in the first lesson. I just, I think for the first one, I didn't do it. And the second one, I, I remember where it was going to go. So I like pretended to grab it and the timing worked perfectly. And some of the kids thought it was like magic. I'm like, well, uh, you know, some of them are like, he's using the clicker. He's using the clicker, you know, but <laughs> it's funny. You can do stuff in class like that to capture their attention, you know, to make them really focused. All right. So the next thing is a guessing game. So the way this works is there's a word bank here. You can point out the word bank in, on, under, next to, and above, and they have the sentence here. So I go by team. So if there's four teams, you have each team tell you what to do. You know, so team one, what should it be? And they say, put the book bag. Obviously, it's not going to be in, <laughs> uh, although we did have some students last year saying that. Put the book bag on the box, please. So next to team one, I'll put on. The next student says, put the book bag under the box, please. Next team, I'll put under. And then next to above, they can, you know, they can say the same thing as another team if they like. And then I show them what the answer should be. It should be, duh, 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 duh. whoever was right can get points. Okay, so put the book bag on the box, please. The whole class says it. The team that guessed correctly gets points, five points, whatever. And then go to the next one, call on one student from each team, have them stand up. You can actually say, where should I put the car? Where should I put the car? And then they'll say, put the toy car, put the toy car in the desk, please. All right, team one says in. Team two, what do you say? Put the toy car above the desk, please. All right, team two says above. And go through each team. They all get, say their sentence. Um, and then you show. Da -dun, da -da -da -da. Oh, next two is the winner. All right, put the toy car next to the de desk, please. And whoever said next to can get five points or whatever. And rinse and repeat. <laughs> okay, so next one. Where should I put the teddy bear? And one student from each team stand up and they tell you the sentence. They give you the command. Put the teddy bear next to the chair, please. Put the teddy bear under the chair, please. On the chair, please. Above the chair, please. Whatever. And then make sure you write it down so they know. So you know, you remember. And then you show. Da, 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 da. Under. All right, which team said under? Oh, team three said under. Team three, five points. And the kids really like this. Okay, again, with this thing, you could pretend to like, I walk up next to the screen and like punch the teddy bear. The teddy bear. The kids really like it. <laughs> or I walk over to the board. This is one of my favorite ones. After they all give me their, their you know, command, what they say, I'll like walk over. I'm like, are you ready? And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, like, I'm going to sneeze, right? And also I'm like, hachoo! And I sneeze right at the teddy bear. And the kids think it's really funny. <laughs> okay. Or you can clap next to the teddy bear, something. The kids will think it's really clever. It's just me be having fun in class. All right. So then the whole class says it together. Put the teddy bear under the chair, please. And next one. One student from each team who would like to try. Where should I put the toy car? Put the toy car on the box. Put the toy car in, not in, in this one. Maybe, actually, I did have some students try to say that. Above the box, next to the box, okay? And then, achoo! And then, ooh, should be above, okay? Put the toy car above the box, please. And points. And same thing here. Um, <laughs> this one maybe is obvious. Where should I put the pencil case? And they tell you their answer right on the board. da 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 Pretty much everyone gets that one. Every class, there's one or two students who decide to tell me next to. They think I'm trying to trick them or on. I think I'm trying to trick them. But nope, it's in. And whole class says it. And actually, this activity was so fun when I played it in my class. I really enjoyed it. And it's just, they love guessing games. And it's just, I don't know, something about it was really fun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. It's just very, very fun for them. All right, let's go on to the next game. Okay, so the next game is a click away game, um, round one. So here's how it works. I will call on uh, a student from one of the teams, have them stand up, and they can give me a command. And like, for example, they can say, put the pencil case above the box, please. Okay, because the pencil case is above the box. They tell me the sentence. 
and I say no problem and I'll pretend to put it there and then I'll click and they get points. Okay, it's very simple, but the kids really, really like this game. Uh, last year, actually, I could like I, re I had this as part of the review for like uh, three weeks, and they, I would change the points every week, but they really liked it. And I started changing the objects, they had different objects. Uh, they really, really liked it. Okay, so simple, but effective, and they're saying the sentence a bunch of times, which is what you want. Okay, next team, put the teddy bear next to the box, please. All right, teddy bear next to the box. This one, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Click, oh, oh, 10 points, yay. Okay, next team, who would like to try? All right, put the pencil case on the chair, please. Are you sure? Yes, all right, click, oh, five points. Okay, and rinse and repeat. Uh, each team can have a go. And they can see all the points. Da -da! And then you can play round two if there's time. Okay, same deal. Just, you know, I changed the points, but same same deal. Okay, and they really like it. Again, these click away games are simple, but effective, and the whole class is really focused. It's, you know, it's gambling. They like it. All right, and that's, that's the whole lesson. Um, you know, there's a bunch of ways you could teach how to use the word put, but this is just the way that I you know, I tried out and I found it worked very effective. And, you know, after I taught them this word, I could use put during class to have them put their things away. Put your pencil in your desk, please. Put, put, put. They understand now. Okay. And I'll randomly tell them, put your hand on your head. Oh, this girl's really fast. Five points. All right. Put your pencil on your head. Okay. <laughs> and I would do stuff like if I didn't say please, they shouldn't do it. So I'd say, Put your pencil on your head, please. And like, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there's a bunch of ways you could do this in the class, but um, teaching them how to understand and use the word put and have them actually use it will feel really good because a lot of students don't use it. And once they do, um, you know, you'll feel that feeling of success in class. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I thought it was a great lesson. I, If you've seen my old uh, or purchase my old PowerPoint, you know that a lot of changes have happened. I've changed the color schemes. I've changed the. I've changed a lot of stuff, and I've added stuff. Um, so I think this is a better version. And yeah, hope you guys learned something in this video. All right, that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget, if you'd like to download this PowerPoint yourself, just go to the link in the video description below. Click that link, and you can download this PowerPoint in minutes, or you can go to my Taobao store, and you can find it there. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button. That really helps out my channel, helps push this video to other people like you who might benefit from my lesson. Um, and yeah, uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and leave a comment below if you have any questions. I would love to hear from you guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.